Spartan. The movie is set in 200 BCE, ancient Greece, where a Spartan elder observes a newborn baby, which looks like Shrek. The narrator explains that if any imperfections are found, then the baby is rejected. As the first baby is green and ugly, it is thrown into the pile down below, which consists of corpses and bones. Baby Shrek not dead, baby Shrek could get revenge soon. The second baby turns out to be of Vietnamese descent, and the narrator explains that he will be adopted by Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. <laughs> <laughs> Narratorception. The third and final baby is accepted as a Spartan for his already present beard and his muscular physique. He is then named Leonidas. From a young age, Leonidas is brutally trained for knighthood and spars with his grandmother. As he grows up, Leonidas is also tortured and taught to show no pain. One day, he is cast out into the wild to survive the harsh winter conditions on his own with barely any clothes. There, a beast with red eyes stalks him, and it's revealed to be a giant penguin. Without wasting any time, the penguin proceeds to abuse Leonidas by jumping on him and body slamming him to the ground. However, our brave protagonist manages to outsmart the penguin by trapping it into a tight spot. He then finds a penguin's spear inside a random glass box and kills the beast with it. After the winter passes through, Leonidas returns back to Sparta for his inauguration as king while wearing a penguin skin hat. Realizing that he has slain the deadly beast, all the people bow in his presence. However, Leonidas appears to be infatuated with a beautiful girl in the crowd named Margot. She dances erotically while sucking on a lollipop and winking constantly. This is enough to win Leonidas over. So, without thinking twice, he asks her to marry him. To his delight, Margot responds by giving him the combination to her armor-plated chastity belt. The movie then cuts to several years later, where it is revealed that Leonidas has become the king of Sparta. Currently, he is violently training his son while Margot watches from the sidelines. Leonidas aggressively throws his son around and headbutts him, teaching him that he must learn to take powerful hits from his enemies. Boy. Margot suggests that he do the pile driver on his son, and so Leonidas drives his son's head into the floor. Whoops, I think Margot meant she wanted Leonidas to pile drive her, not the kid. Shortly after, Leonidas' best friend named the Captain arrives there and reveals that the messenger of Persia has come to talk with him. So, Leonidas ends his training with his son and heads to meet the messenger. He then greets his guest with a friendly kiss, claiming that in Sparta, they shake hands with women and kiss the men. The two of them then hold hands and take a walk. As they continue chatting, the messenger of Persia tells Leonidas that the great Persian king, Xerxes, has taken over the world with his vast army. Now, he wants to conquer Sparta as his last conquest. Hearing this, Leonidas becomes infuriated, so he takes the messenger and his accomplices over to the pit of death. But, even there, the Persians warn the Spartans to surrender immediately if they want to prevent the war. In addition, the messenger explains the Persian king Xerxes' demands that the Spartans must build his pyramids, the women will be used as escorts, and the children will work in factories to produce shoes. While a Spartan politician named Traitoro is in favor of surrendering, Leonidas strictly refuses. He then kicks the messenger down the pit of death, along with his accomplices, officially starting the war with the Persians. Following the incident, many celebrities, including Britney Spears, Kevin Federline, Sanjay Amalakar, Ryan Seacrest, appear before the pit of death, and Leonidas kicks all of them down. Furthermore, all the judges of American Idol, including Simon Cowell, pre-ridiculous facelift, Randy Jackson, and Paula Abdul, also suddenly appear. They insult the Spartan king by telling him that his kicks were very poor. <laughs> I can't believe that these movies aired in theaters. Leonidas is furious, and as a result, he shoves them down the pit as well. Afterwards, the captain suggests that before confronting the Persians, Leonidas should consult with the prophets. It turns out that the prophets are advisors to the king of Sparta. So, the same evening, Leonidas visits them with a bunch of cosmetic products as their consultation fee. However, the prophets advise him to consult with the oracle instead. The oracle is supposed to be the chosen from the most beautiful of women, but she is actually the famous Ugly Betty. The oracle of Sparta then informs Leonidas that he will die should he go to war against Persia and Xerxes. Despite the clear warning, Leonidas decides to go to war anyway. At night, he cannot sleep due to the immense pressure on his shoulders. And seeing this, Margot mentions that he can do whatever he likes with her even give her the pile drive. Leonidas likes the idea, but instead of pleasing her, he starts using her as a weight to exercise. <laughs>
The following day, Leonidas happily heads out to meet his army assembled by the captain. However, his expression quickly changes when he learns that a mere 13 soldiers fit into his stringent requirements. Among them, the captain's only son, Sonio, is also present. The odds are firmly stacked against the Spartans, but despite this, Leonidas wants to proceed with the plan. So, after saying goodbye to his family, he, along with the captain and the warriors, set out for their venture to Thermopylae. Meanwhile, the Spartan politician Traitoro is revealed to be a traitor. <laughs> as he informs Xerxes everything via email. Upon reaching the hot gates of Thermopylae, the Spartans take a moment to replenish their thirst by consuming their favorite drink, Gatorade. Suddenly, Leonidas and the captain encounter a deformed Paris Hilton, who reveals a secret goat path above the hot gates. Apparently, Xerxes is planning to outflank the Spartans using it. She then asks to be made a Spartan warrior, but Leonidas quickly rejects her after seeing her hold a spear the incorrect way. Afterwards, Leonidas and his 13 man army face off with the Persian army leader and his troops. Out of nowhere, one of the Spartans named Dilios lunges towards the Persians to attack, but miserably fails as he jumps over them and crashes into a nearby hill. With this, the two parties fight an intense battle, but not in the way one would imagine. They actually indulge in a game of dance-off, which the Spartans eventually win with their flashy moves. As a punishment for losing, they drive the Persians off of a cliff and into the sea. With this, our heroes succeed in defending Thermopylae from the first wave of attackers. In the meantime, in Sparta, the local loyalist visits Margot, who is in the middle of a massage. He talks to her about how Leonidas stands no chance against the Persians with only 13 men, so he wants Margot to convince the council to assemble more troops. The only obstacle that they must face is the Spartan politician Traitoro, as he is also one of the council members. But fortunately, Margot manages to seduce him using her assets. Back in Thermopylae, the Persian king Xerxes visits Leonidas himself and tries to convince him to surrender Sparta. The two then play a game of deal or no deal, where Xerxes tries to bribe him with a trip to the Palms Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. Leonidas hesitates for a bit, but ultimately declines the offer, much to Xerxes' dismay. As a result, the two sets of soldiers have a Yo Mama battle, which is one by the Spartans. But unfortunately, during their fight, Dilios gets hit in the face and his eyes are gouged out by one of the Persians. Th this is... All right. Following this, the movie cuts to Xerxes' palace, where the deformed Paris Hilton is seen searching for the king. It's revealed that she is there to betray the Spartans, and so she informs Xerxes of the secret goat path above the hot gates. In return, she requests for an expensive Chanel handbag and for her deformed hump to be removed from her back. The king immediately obliges and gives her the handbag. However, when Xerxes attempts to remove the deformed hump, he is sent flying by the large amount of mucus present inside. This movie sucks! The next day, while Leonidas eats ice cream, Sonio learns that the Persians have found out about the secret passage and frantically informs him. Leonidas then approaches his fellow warrior Dilios, who has been rendered blind from the previous attack. He orders Dilios to travel back to Sparta so that he can tell the tales of how the Spartans had valiantly fought in the war, and also to give his necklace back to Margot. Afterwards, the King Xerxes and his Persian army arrive at Thermopylae and ask Leonidas to surrender for the last time. But. When he refuses, Xerxes gets frustrated and calls an additional army of a million Persians. Meanwhile, Margot finally faces the loyal counselors and dances before them, giving them a short show. The old men throw bills at her and cheer her on when suddenly she gets serious and implores them to send additional troops to Thermopylae. However, Traitoro betrays Margot and says that the Spartans should instead surrender to Xerxes. Margot is furious and unleashes a venomous rage, transforming her into Spider-Man, while Traitoro Traitoro wields the powers of Sandman. The two fight, and Margot ultimately defeats Traitoro by sucking him up with the help of a vacuum cleaner. After his defeat, the counselors finally learn from his phone that he was in fact a traitor to the Spartans. As a result, they decide to send additional troops to aid Leonidas in battle. Back in Thermopylae, the war begins between the two armies. In the midst of the fight, the Persians reveal that they have the Ghost Rider as their secret weapon, but he is easily defeated by Sonio, who puts him out with a fire extinguisher. They also also reveal the famous boxer Rocky, who decapitates Sonio in one blow. The captain is enraged, and to avenge his son, he kills Rocky by injecting a dangerous amount of Botox into his head. He then starts celebrating the win by lifting Rocky's boxing championship belt, but right then, Xerxes eliminates him with a spear through the heart. Witnessing this, a furious Leonidas begins chasing Xerxes. The scene resembles a Grand Theft Auto San Andreas style chase as he hijacks a person's car and starts dancing. After a while, Leonidas gets out of the car 
car and finds a crowbar, which he uses to beat a Persian guy to death. Out of nowhere, he then picks up two assault rifles and opens fire on some enemy troops. Xerxes runs for his life, but suddenly trips, not being able to handle his own weight. The Persian king then discovers a transformer cube beside him in the sand and picks it up. All of a sudden, he transforms into a gigantic human robot and names himself Xerxes Tron. The Spartans cower in fear while Xerxes Tron shows off his powers by playing a particular YouTube video on his chest screen. After this, he proceeds to attack the Spartans, hoping to win the war once and for all. But when he steps forward, he accidentally trips on his extension cord and falls to the ground. Xerxes dies a painful death, but he also crushes all the surviving Spartans, including Leonidas. Meanwhile, Delios finally reaches Sparta and hands over the necklace to Queen Margot. The latter is devastated to learn that her husband has perished in the war. The movie cuts one year into the future, where a blind Delios leads a larger Spartan force to defeat the Persians. But because of his blindness, he loses his sense of direction and ends up leading his army in a completely different location. In the movie's final moments, the Spartans eventually end up in Malibu, California, where they knock down the famous celebrity Lindsay Lohan as she leaves a rehabilitation center. <laughs> Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.